I'm going to give you um, an overview of the software structure and some of our development processes of the Spring Gateway's introduction. Um, first, uh, I'm going to give uh, I'm going to talk about a bit uh, about Python and uh, the Anaconda software stack. Uh, one question at once: uh, How many? Are there any installation problems? Uh, some some installation did not succeed. You're not having like dependency problems or something. Uh, everything went fine. So there's nobody who has problems, right? Um, okay. Um, I'm going to show you how the uh, Python package was structured. I'm going to talk about the uh, an estimator pattern uh, from uh, scikit-learn, which we use uh, all over the, the, the package. And uh, the second part will be very shortly about uh, our development processes. So, um, why we cho have chosen Python um, as the language for um, to, to build PyAmma. Uh, it has very um, very easy to use core libraries like um, NumPy for numerics, um, Matplotlib for plotting, um, and it's very it's like a, the, the it's very clean language, so it's easy to learn, and it's general purpose. So it's not only like um, for a very special task, but um, you can write um, easily whatever you want in it. So it's also good for quick prototyping, just experiments experiment, um, implement a quick algorithm and test it. But it's not meant to be um, a fast language. So um, you always have to keep in mind Python is a scripting language and so you have to actually do the number crunching or the algorithms which require speed uh, in faster languages like C++, C or Fortran. And you glue these um, and quick implementations and uh, these uh, abs more abstract languages, um, you glue them together uh, to a piece of software with Python. Um, for the sake of simplicity, we, uh, we have chosen to support this Anaconda uh, software stack um, because it uh, makes it easy to uh, install the software for different operating systems. Um, it handles dependencies automatically, so the upgrade process um, when we make a new release it should be very easy for you. It's just like on the update package name, so PyAmma, and all of the dependencies will be handled. So there's also like conflict checking and it prints nice messages if there is a problem. And you can also create isolated work environments, so if you doing a study and you want to fix the version <coughs> numbers uh, of the software to a certain point, you um, can try another version in a new environment. These are really isolated, so they don't interfere with each other, uh, which is a really good thing because then even after uh, a long time, you, can, you have still these pinned versions and you can reproduce your results. Um, this is uh, an overview <laughs> oh, so sorry. Uh, uh, of the PyAmma uh, software hierarchy, or the package hierarchy. Uh, we have four important sub-packages within PyAmma, which are the API level. So the coordinates, sub-package handles, um, for example, the clustering, you read in your MD data um, and transform it, transform it to a meaningful uh, space in our case. Like you will find Tika, PCA, K means in this package. In the MSM package, um, you find um, all of the uh, Markov state models related algorithms like estimation and analysis. In the Sermo uh, package, um, there are um, if you work with trajectories at multiple uh, thermodynamic uh, states, um, you can do the analysis here and the plots packages for convenient 
calls to visualize uh, results you get either from here, here, or there. Um, as you see, we depend on a bunch of other libraries which um, uh, do like more uh, low level stuff, so the uh, functionality uh, which is available increases, and also the detailedness, and it's getting uh, less user friendly because you're overwhelmed by a bunch of features which you're actually not that much interested in. Of course, NumPy is uh, the working horse all over, um, <coughs> so you depend on arrays. Um, for example, if you extract coordinates, like just plain coordinates from your ND data, these will be stored in so-called NumPy arrays, so it's good to know about a bit about NumPy. But actually, most of the stuff is just um, hidden by the high-level user interface uh, in PyEmma, so you don't need to deal with all these detailedness. Um, so it's just uh, good to know that um, we rely on these um, libraries. So NVTraps is used for um, um, for for reading MD data, um, extracting features like angles, distances, contacts, um, do a dimension reduction and a clustering to have these uh, discrete step functions in the end. Um, so if this can be potentially large, like terabytes or whatever. And um, so we have to use like a streaming dating data pattern. Uh, you don't have to load everything into memory and um, process it then. But um, the data is being uh, read in chunks. So this makes it, um, in most cases, IO efficient. Um, and you don't need to, um, within this pipeline, you're not in the need of um, dump every intermediate result. Of course, sometimes you want to have it, and you can also do it, but um, it's not necessary. Um, within PyEmma, most of the objects you're uh, dealing with are estimators. So, um, for example, you have a k-means estimator. Oh, the contrast is really bad. Um, this is uh, <laughs> um, this is just a parameter for this k-means. So it's just a k, how many cluster centers we want, we want, and um, when you construct this estimator over the API, you can uh, choose. Um, you have to choose a, a value for k and uh, by the construction of the estimator this is fixed and when you call estimate um, then data is taken into account so you have to pass data and then this uh, default value for the k is just um, taken into account so if I construct my k-means estimator and call estimate on it this k is already being fixed in this estimator instance but I can um, override other estimation parameters. And these estimation parameters are um, being stored in this estimated class and just uh, taken uh, whenever you, you run an estimation. So um, when, you, when you do the estimation, you get um, you have like attributes available within this estimator. In this example, it's just uh, uh, cluster centers. And um, the difference to uh, scikit-learn, uh, which is like a very popular um, um, machine learning Python package, um, is just that um, most of our estimators accept streamed input. As I said. Uh, trajectory and D data can be very large and um, we just handle this. So in scikit-learn, uh, everything has to be loaded into memory, which is not feasible in this map. Okay. So, I 
think I'm going to skip over this. So we, we um, just to note, we um, support four um, major formats and these simulation data. Uh, so this handles all the formats which are implemented with an MD trash. You can load uh, NumPy files, um, tabulated ASCII data, and you can group your, if you have, for example, um, uh, a fragmented data set. So you have data from GPU grid or so, um, where uh, realizations of the same trajectory are just um, fragmented over several uh, hosts. You can group them together to uh, simulate a long trajectory. Um, um, MDTRAD is also used um, to extract order parameters uh, like distances, angles, dihedrals, NMR observables. Uh, they have a bunch of features. Um, most of them are uh, wrapped in PyEmma, but you can also um, just use a custom feature and uh, write your own function to extract order parameters to feed it to PyEmma. The MSM package takes as an input uh, the discrete trajectories, which have been <coughs> just calculated in the, with, with help of the coordinates package. You do a time scales uh, selection, so the, the tau at which you, ch uh, you choose to estimate the model with. Um, then you have a couple of methods. Um, to estimate um, Markov state models or hidden Markov state models, and also validation methods are available in this package. Uh, the colors of um, the blue, so blue, uh, the blue color indicates that these are estimators, and the red ones are models. Actually, a model and an estimator is not uh, really distinguishable because. Um, you um, have all the attributes you estimate uh, are within this model, but it's hidden in within the estimator. So you just need to deal with one object, which runs the estimation and makes all the derived or computed quantities available. And analysis uh, functionality. So the user interface in the um, in the MSM package is uh, just what, uh, what Frank told you. Um, you choose a good lag time. Uh, to do so, you invoke the function timescales MSM, which will then do um, a one-shot estimation over several different lag times. And um, you can visualize the result of this estimator with the with a function in the plots package, do a visual inspection. Um, we will get to this in detail later. Um, and then when you have found a good um, lag time, you uh, call the estimate Markov model function. Then you can validate it with the uh, chapman kolmogorov test function <coughs> and run for a, a couple of analysis steps. So um, our development process um, is, um, as Frank already said, is uh, open on GitHub. We um, one major goal is uh, to provide a stable and easy uh, to use user interface. Um, we uh, <coughs> focus on speed and stability by using very sophisticated high-level libraries. And we also have a focus on good documentation. So um, if there's anything unclear in the documentation or anything missing, uh, you can uh, just tell me if you see something or post it on GitHub if you like, if you have an account. Um, <coughs> on, we, we test the software very um, carefully. So every time a developer changes something, we um, there, there is a bunch of uh, uh, automated tests running. And um, to
to preserve uh, we want that your if we, we release a new version that your scripts continue to work so we don't just change something and then uh, your whole analysis pipeline breaks down but um, we um, deprecate functions first which means that you if you continue to use something uh, we would like to change or remove in the future we keep this for a couple of versions and show you a warning that please don't use this uh, this method but use another one if there's uh, an alternative um, to, uh, well, to indicate that um, the behavior is going to change dramatically, sometimes it's uh, unavoidable, but uh, we keep that as low as possible, uh, release a major version. So um, if uh, the, uh, the API is going to change uh, tremendously, uh, we release a new major version, which just means we transition from version 1 to 2 and a minor version would be like from 1.5 to 1.6 or so. Um, and by just this pattern we, um, yeah, we show you how um, the API changes. If uh, you don't get any warnings or so, you're safe. Um, okay, I can skip over that. Frank already showed like uh, how is GitHub looking like? Um, so if you want to report a problem, you use this issue, tap. Um, and if you want to make contributions, um, you discovered a, a problem which is maybe it's easy to fix or you, you have found a better solution, you can propose this change uh, to us if you um, run, uh, you press this fork button, you will get uh, <coughs> your own copy of um, <coughs> our repository and you can make arbitrary changes to that and if you feel like this, this is a good contribution, other people should benefit from it, um, you can propose this change back to be merged by us <coughs> into this main development tree. So, um, it's here. Um, so there are different users uh, which provide other changes and these are, as you see, they fork off the main copy, did something in the meantime, changed something and then it's going to be merged back into the main development branch. Um, this is how a proposed change looks like. Um, we can have a discussion about uh, these changes. Uh, everything is public, so um, everybody could contribute to this discussion um, before this is going to be merged. And um, this is actually a very good thing because um, if this process is open, um, uh, more people can uh, get involved. And. Um, it's a, it's a good thing for us to be in touch with, with our users. Um, yeah, I already said we, we, we test a lot because there are a lot of... Uh, you can use the software on uh, three different major architectures and um, different NumPy versions and all of this is tested. Um, well, I can skip over this. So, um, yeah, already said that. Um, so, if you feel like participating or just found an issue, you can also send us an email. Um, but if you have a GitHub account, uh, most people have, I guess. Um, you can, it would be preferable to us if you just create an issue there. Um, we also provide a mailing list. Um, we occasionally announce things there. Um, so this um, yeah, would be 
the options to 